Okay, in this question, we're expanding a little bit from the arithmetic with positive numbers only, expanding that into all rational numbers. Of course, that means that we're now including negative numbers. So in this first problem, if you take a look, when we are multiplying all these negative factors, you can tell you're multiplying because they're all just enclosed in parentheses, you can realize, first of all, oh, the only factor here is the number 1. And regardless of what I have, if I have one group of it, I'm always going to have one group. It's never going to change. So here we know the answer is either positive or negative 1. And then it's not so hard to figure out because each pair right, of negative factors multiply to give you a positive result. There are four pairs here. They're each positive. Altogether, our result is positive. And next, we have something similar where we're dealing with negatives, except we're adding. So negative 4 plus negative 3. We can go left to right because the only operation here really throughout is addition. And when that happens, if it's all addition or all subtraction and addition or any combination of addition and subtraction, you go from left to right. So here, negative 4 and negative 3 is negative 7. Then we have plus negative 2, plus negative 1, and plus 4. Well, negative 7 and negative 2 is negative 9, right? Plus negative 1 plus negative 4. Well, negative 9 and negative 1 is negative 10. If we add 4 to that, we get, well, negative 6. You can think about that number line, right? We have negative 10. If we hop up 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, that goes up to negative 9, negative 8, negative 7, and our answer, negative 6. So that's the second one. The third one, um, again, here we're just dealing with negative numbers, so now we have negative fractions. And we have negative 1 half. I'm going to put the negative signs in our numerators. Just as a, a note of reference, it doesn't matter where you put it, as long as you have the negative somewhere in the numerator or denominator. I find typically for myself it's easier to deal with if I have it in the numerator. Okay, so here we have negative 1 half plus negative 1 fourth. Again, a half is like having 50 cents, or negative 50 cents, or 0.5. That's a half. Plus a quarter, or negative 0.25. Think of money, right? A negative quarter and a negative half dollar equals a negative 75 cents, which is negative 3 fourths, or the answer. If we don't like that algorithm, again, we can choose to think of it as negative 1 half plus negative 1 fourth, multiplied negative 1 half by 2 over 2, not changing the value, just rewriting it so we have equal denominators. We get negative 2 over 4 plus negative 1 over 4. Altogether, negative 3 over 4. So we get the same answer. This last question here it says negative 2 fifths, right? Divided by 2 thirds. Now, when you're dividing a fraction, you're multiplying by a reciprocal, right? Multiplying by a number, for example, like let's say I had 4 times. Uh, 2. That would be 8. Well, 4 times 1 half, the reciprocal is, right, 2. So instead of doubling it, we're halving it. The same thing happens here. Um, the opposite, if you think of this, of 4 times a half could also be thought of as not just 4 times 2, but 4 divided by a half. And that also equals 8. And it reminds you here that these two things are equal. Right? And as a reminder, if you say 4 divided by a half, all that's saying is, let's say you have 4 whole maybe pizzas. And I said, okay, you have 4 pizzas. Well, how many halves? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 make those 4 holes. And here you can see there are 2 in each hole. Altogether, it's an 8. So anyway, the idea is you're multiplying by the reciprocal. Here, we have negative 2 fifths multiplied by what? Well, 3 over 2. What's nice is we can think of this as negative 6, right, over 10. And we can reduce that. We would get 3 fifths, right, negative 3 fifths. But we can also think of this here. We're multiplying and dividing by 2. That result, whatever it is, if I double it and half it, multiply it by 2 and divide it by 2, um, th that means those numbers won't affect anything, right? 2 and multiplying by 2, dividing by 2, on do each other. They're inverses, so that won't matter. Either way, we should get three-fifths, but what's nice is when you cancel out these twos right here, you can see the answer. Negative three, that negative one is still there, over five. And that's what we got.
Thanks.